So, thanks to very good directions from Brent, it didn't take too long to find this very big male lion. And some of you may well know a lot more than I do about this animal, so I would appreciate any bits of information you may have on him. Like I said, I've been very out of the loop, but what I can assure you is that this guy is not going anywhere soon. As you can see, he's fast asleep. And like I said a bit earlier, it is quite warm. He appears to have quite a full belly. I'm told that he may have snuck in on a meal of a zebra that a pride of lions made not too far from here this morning. So he's well fed in the shade, panting heavily and quite content for now. Oh. oh, well, there's a very, very good characteristic, that scar over his eye, so I'm sure now some of you who tune into Safari Live Daily will know exactly who he is. And it's one of the things that we really miss about the Sabi Sands and Safari Live in general is that you really do manage to keep such close tabs on these animals and get a great insight into their lives, what happens, not just looking at them, as a species, but more of an individual. Oh, well, thanks very much to Annie, who's already helped out with the name of this line, which is Mfumo, and I'm sure he's part of a greater coalition, and he's probably just doing the rounds on his own now, but thanks very much, Annie, for helping me out with that. Now that he's laid down on his side, you can see that full belly I was talking about earlier. And the good news for him is that he can go for a good few days without feeding after a meal like this. And during this time, he may be able to focus his efforts more on patrolling what I'm sure is a large territory. He seems to be in his prime, making sure that there's no imposters, and also making sure that there's no ladies that may be looking for a male. Wouldn't that be a treat? Great question through from Riker, from one of the schools in Virginia. Great to have you with us. And I always tell the school kids to be very grateful of their teachers allowing them to get involved in this. So don't forget that. Riker, you would like to know if lions ever go into any kind of form of hibernation. And it's a good question. Lions don't actually do that. Um, they actually probably prefer the colder months and become more active in the winter, especially during the daylight hours. So the lion's not a good example of an animal that hibernates. And actually, most animals in, in South Africa, where it's quite hot where we are now, will not have the need to hibernate because we don't get very much snow here. But we get the opposite of that, Riken. It's called estivation, which means you... Uh, become less active like animals do when they hibernate only when it becomes very hot and dry so animals like crocodiles will do that when the rivers dry up they'll go into the caves and basically sleep until the rains come again so there are animals that estivate in Africa when it gets very hot and dry and when there's not much food around but the lions thankfully they can handle the weather throughout the year through summer and winter they'll be on the move Hello Hayden, also from another school. Great to have you with us. And you are entirely correct. Lions do like to sleep. They love to sleep actually. And they sleep for many, many hours of every day. Sometimes 20 hours will be spent sleeping. So when they move, they move with purpose and they can often move fairly large distances quite quickly. But when it's time to sleep, they really do enjoy it. And in the summer months, and even now going into winter when it's still quite warm, they'll be mainly active at night for that, those kind of four or five hours of movement. Which makes our job a little bit tricky because of course we would prefer to see them on the move, in action, doing their business. 
But the good news is, is if we're patient this afternoon and we come back a little bit later and spend some time with him, hopefully we'll get to see him waking up. Maybe he'll roar for us if we're very lucky. If there's one thing that I wish I could show everyone on safari, it would be a lion roaring. It's one of the most impressive things to experience. And later we could get lucky. So even if your class finishes, when you go home, tune in and maybe you'll get to see the king of the beasts roaring. As I said earlier, it was Brent's wonderful directions to this line that got us here. And you can thank him because you're about to jump onto his vehicle.